Karma and Reincarnation, read by Dave Marsland of Cardiff Theosophical Society. This piece is an extract from Four Dimensional Vistas, written by Claude Bragdon and published in 1916. Karma and Reincarnation Karma is that self-adjusting force in human affairs which restores harmony disturbed by action. It is the moral law of compensation and by its operation produces all conditions of life, misery and happiness, birth, death and rebirth, itself being both the cause and the effect of action. Its operation is indicated in the phrase, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. The essential idea of reincarnation is indicated in the following quotation from the Upanishads. And as a goldsmith taking a piece of gold turns it into another newer and more beautiful shape, so does this self, having thrown off this body and dispelled all ignorance, making unto himself another and more beautiful shape. Reincarnation is the periodic dip of an immortal individual into materiality for the working out of karma. After an interval, long or short, spent under other conditions of existence. These alternations constitute the broader and deeper diapason of human life, of which the change from waking to sleeping represents the lesser and the momentary awareness and unawareness of the sense mechanism to stimulation the least. Thus, a physical incarnation, in the broadest sense of the term, is the interval, long or short, of the immersion of consciousness into materiality. Under fatigue, the soul life withdraws. That is, it ceases to respond to physical stimuli and so passes out of incarnation. When this occurs en masse, there transpires the hiatus of the personal consciousness called sleep, and while sleep lasts, the personality is out of incarnation. After death, in the interval between one life and the next, the specific memories of the personality fade out as in sleep, or rather become latent, leaving the soul, the permanent life centre, clear and colourless, in a mysterious focus of spiritual forces and affinities, the seeds of karma, ready for another sowing in the world of men. This centre of consciousness is thereupon drawn to the newly forming body, the life environment of which will rightly and justly, perhaps retributively, bring the tendencies and characteristics of the conscious centre into objectivity again. Character is destiny, and character is self-created. All that we are is a result of what we have thought. But in the vast complexity and volume of human life, there is a constant production of forms, with all the varieties of characteristics and capacities requisite to meet the needs of every soul thirsty for the destiny that awaits it. And here, heredity plays its part. The parent provides not the mind nor the soul, but only the vehicle of expression of another karmically related soul. Beyond the individual soul is the world soul, which periodically incarnates in the humanity of a planet, and beyond the worlds of a single system, sun souls, incarnating suns and congeries of suns, and beyond all, and within all, one. The profound and pregnant doctrines of karma and reincarnation, here so sketchily outlined, are but expanses of one of the fundamental propositions of all Eastern philosophical systems, that the effect is the unfoldment of the cause in time. To omit a consideration of karma and reincarnation in connection with higher time would be to force a passage and then not follow where it leads. The idea of time curvature is implicit in the ideas of karma and reincarnation. For what is karma but the return of time, the flowering in the present 
of some seed sown elsewhere and long ago. And what is reincarnation but the major cycle of that sweep into objective existence and out again of which the alternation between waking and sleeping is the lesser counterpart.